All right, so we were working on section 44A, so picking back up with example number two. In example number two, we were told tangent was equal to negative 5 fourths and cosine was greater than zero, and they wanted us to find the sine and the secant. So we had said since tangent by definition is y over x, we knew that the y value was 5 and the x value was 4, but we didn't know whether it was the x or the y that was negative. And so we need this other piece of information over here that cosine is greater than 0. If we go back to the chart that we built earlier today and we look at where is cosine greater than 0, meaning where is it positive, that's in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. We also know that tangent is less than 0 since tangent was negative 5 fourths. So we look and say where is tangent less than 0 and that's right here in the second quadrant and right here in the fourth quadrant. So the only place that both cosine is positive and tangent is negative is in the fourth quadrant. So that means for our problem we're in the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant we know that x is positive and y is negative so we know the negative goes with the 5. Alright so once we know x and y then we can use Pythagorean theorem to find r. Well I don't have to do that. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? Well if r is your radius or your hypotenuse, it has to be the longest side, so it can't be 3. So I am going to have to do Pythagorean theorem to find the length of my other side. So as I go through and do x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, I get r squared is equal to 41. Take the square root of both sides and I'll get r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 41. Remember that we've already said that your radius is always going to be a positive value, so it's going to be a positive square root of 41. That's a freebie. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so to find sine, by definition, sine is y over r. So we can go through and say y is negative 5 and r is square root of 41. So that would be negative 5 over the square root of 41. And of course, we're going to rationalize our answer. So multiply top and bottom by the square root of 41 to get that radical out of the denominator. To find our secant, secant is equal to r over x. So if we put our r value square root of 41 over our x value 4, then that would give us square root of 41 over 4. Now, you can determine your signs at the beginning of the problem like we did here, or you can determine your signs at the end of the problem. I tend to determine my signs at the end of the problem because I'm really bad about um, making careless mistakes and dropping signs. So ra rather than trying to maintain them all the way through the problem, I'll wait until the very end. So here's what I'm talking about. I would still start at the very beginning and say, okay, x is 4, y is 5, but I wouldn't worry about whether it was positive or negative. And I would still do the Pythagorean theorem and get the square root of 41. I could go through and say, okay, sine is the y value over the r value, but I wouldn't know if it was positive or negative. Secant is the r value over the x value, but I wouldn't know if it was positive or negative. Until I came over here and determined I was in the fourth quadrant, and then I could say, okay, in the fourth quadrant, these are all my signs. This is really helpful when I have to give all six of the trig functions, because I can just go through and say, okay, my sine should be negative, my cosine should be positive, my tangent should be negative, and the reciprocals would be the same. The cosecant would be negative, secant positive, and cotangent negative. So it's a really fast, easy way to throw all of my signs in at the very end and not have to worry about maintaining them through the whole problem. You'll notice over here that I would have said, okay, what's sine? Well, sine's negative, so I would have put the negative in front and then secant, I would have said, is the same thing as cosine, so it's positive, and I would have left it positive. All right, last thing we want to look at, example number three. They ask us to tell whether 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2, uh, they ask us to give the sine and the cosine values for each of those. Now, these are called our quadrantal angles. Uh, they get their name because they're not really in a quadrant, they're between two quadrants. Uh, like zero is not in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, it's like the boundary marker between. So these are our quadrantal angles, um, zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And we want to know the sine and the cosine at each of those values. 
Now, because this is a unit circle and I do have a radius of 1, then I can say sine is just y over r and r is 1, so sine is just my y value. Cosine is x over r and r is 1, so cosine is just my x value. So if I look at my ordered pair at 0, I can see that ordered pair is 1, 0, and that will help me determine, okay, my sine is y, it's 0, and my cosine is x, it's 1. So we're going to want to memorize those ordered pairs that go with those quadrantal angles. Now, honestly, you don't have to memorize it. It's really more of an idea of common sense. If you had a circle with a radius of 1, if you started right here and you went over 1 unit, where would you be? You would be at 1, 0. If you started right here and you went up 1 unit, where would you be? You would be at 0, 1. If you started right here at 0 and you went back 1, where would you be? You'd be at negative 1, 0. And if you started right here and you went down 1, where would you be? You'd be at 0, negative 1. So it's easy to find those four ordered pairs. We say memorize these tonight, but honestly, um, we don't have to if we use some common sense to figure them out. Okay, so if we're looking for the sine at 0, then we can say, let's come over here to 0 and look at our ordered pair. Sine is the same thing as y, so if I want the sine at 0, that's just going to be a y value of 0. If I want the cosine at 0, that's just going to be an x value of 1. Come up here to pi over 2 for the sine and cosine. Sine is the y value, so sine of pi over 2 would be 1. Cosine is the x value, so cosine at pi over 2 would be 0. All right, pi for the ordered pair, we've got negative 1, 0. So the sine value would be the y value, that would be 0. Cosine value would be the x value, that would be negative 1. And then down here at 3 pi over 2, we've got our ordered pair. Sine would be the y value, so that would be negative 1. Cosine would be the x value, that would be 0. All right, so here's our homework for tonight. On page 320, we're doing 1 through 23 odd, 31 through 37 odd, omit numbers 5 and 11, and then for your challenge problem, do number 23.